ChatGPT has just released their desktop app for Mac to the world. I've had access for a month and been taking it through its paces and I'm here to answer one question. Is it worth your time? I have a new PC that I'm using to test open source AI models. So for the first time in over 20 years, I'm disappointed that something is Mac only. I want all of my tools and apps on both of my machines. In this video, I'll show you how to download and install the ChatGPT app for Mac. Then I'll test how it compares to using the browser version of ChatGPT. I'll show you the features that make this app unique, and then we'll decide if it's worth the space on your hard drive. I'm excited to kick the tires on this one, so let's fire up the music and get right into it. Before we get started, I want to make it clear that this is not a review of ChatGPT. I'm only going to compare the functionality of the desktop app in comparison to the web app to see if there's any difference in the user experience. That should help to keep this video lean and mean. There are two ways that you can download and install the ChatGPT app for Mac. If you're not logged in, you can go to openai.com slash ChatGPT slash download. You just scroll down and you want to click for Mac OS, and it will instantly start the download. As you can see, it starts downloading the DMG file. So I'm going to let that run. And if I click Learn More, it will tell us a little bit more about it. This is at openaicom mac If you want to see more of what the functions are available, which we're going to cover in just a moment, and you can also click Download here. The other option, if you're logged into ChatGPT, you can click on your name. And if you're on Mac, you'll see Download the Mac OS app under that little picture of yourself in the upper right hand corner where you see my plans, my GPTs and the other settings options and log out. These are the two ways to download ChatGPT and next I'll show you the installation process. To install on your Mac, all you're going to do is double click on the .dmg file that just downloaded and you're going to drag the ChatGPT app into your applications and when you do that, it's ready to run. Let me show you that one more time. I've already installed it, so I'm just going to click stop because I don't need to install it twice, but that's the entire process. Very easy on a Mac. You drag and drop it in. Now, the first functionality that they talk about is how easy it is to activate. If I push options space, it's supposed to bring up the ChatGPT app, but watch that again. Option space, nothing happens. Even though it's supposed to have this functionality, you have to open the app first to make the shortcut actually work. It doesn't activate the app from nothing. So I'm going to go to my applications, find ChatGB app. I'm going to open it. Now that ChatGB is open, the same functionality option space suddenly opens up this little bar here, which is the shortcut, very similar to accessing the spotlight. And this gives us just minimum functionality. If we click the paperclip, we can upload a file, upload a photo, take a screenshot or take a photo. If I click take a photo, it will ask for access to the camera. I'll allow it access. I can click the button. And I can say, who is in this picture? See if it knows who I am. And it then loads up the full-size app. So it doesn't say the small applet for long. Let's see if it recognizes me. Who knows? I'm unable to identify. So it doesn't know who I am. OK. What is this picture of? It's pretty accurate. Notice that ChatGPT is afraid to say man or woman, it just says a person and it's a person, this person seems to be it. And that's fine because a lot of AI image generators actually misidentify me either as a really old man or as an old woman. So I'm kind of okay with this because I'm tired of it getting it wrong. So I understand what they're doing here, they're hedging their bets, but I just wanted to point out that's what they're doing. Now, as far as functionality, what we want to do is compare how this operates differently to ChatGPT desktop. Now, if I want to start a conversation, I can click the pencil and it will start a new conversation. I have to make the decision of who I'm going to talk to first. So a lot of the dashboard stuff is now moved under here where it says chat 240 Right now we have access to chat 240 chat 4 chat 3.5. Here are the GPTs that I use the most often that I built myself. The 30 more that I've self-created, those are the creations I have in this dashboard. And if I go further down, this is where they hid explore GPT. So it's not easy to find. A GPT is made by other people that you've never used before. So it's a little easier in the desktop app. And I'll show you the difference right now. In the desktop app, I can click Explore GPTs. It's on the left dashboard. I find this a little more natural, burying it in a different section. I'm not sure why they moved buttons around. That's one of the biggest differences. 
going back to the app, the functionality really is exactly the same as everything else I can do from the web browser. So in the web browser, if I just start a new chat, I can click the paperclip and I can upload from my computer. The only difference is the ability to take a screenshot or a picture of myself. Otherwise, I can upload files in the exact same way and I have the ability to upload from my Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive right now. It doesn't do Dropbox yet, but I'm sure eventually they'll add that functionality. Dropbox is the one that I mainly use. Overall, the difference is really infinitesimal. Unless you absolutely love the ability to just hit option space, there's not a significant difference between the user experience. The most important thing is that sometimes I'm running two conversations at the same time. So I'm reusing a past prompt and then I'm using a new one. Instead of having two tabs open, I'll have the app open and then I'll have a browser and sex to it side by side. And let me show you what that looks like. I can have the chat GPT app on the right and the website on the left. One of the other things that's different is there's a little more help here. It offers the four, not very useful in my opinion, but the four prompts that you can choose from, create a workout plan, experience soul like a local, design a fun coding game, or Python script for daily email reports. This is the real difference. And to me, it's insignificant because I've never clicked on any of those but it is one of the few differences. Otherwise, the buttons are pretty much the same. They're in slightly different positions. I wanna close the sidebar and close both sidebars. There we go. And the other difference is that all the other little apps that I have that are all over the screen disappear, so I have a little more real estate to work with. And if I wanna bring it back, I can't just go to the side. I do have to click over here. And Eventually, I believe they'll move and make the website be the same because otherwise, why would the app have the GPTs inside of here? Probably the sidebar is gonna be changing in the future. The sidebar that starts at today, everything above that is what's different between the two things. Other than that, they're really exactly the same. It's only a really small use case. If you like having a separate app so that you can close your web browser or so that you can tab back and forth between something happened on a web browser and something happening in the chat GPT app, those are really the two best use cases from my experimentation. Overall, this new pretty cool little app for the Mac is useful, but it's not a game changer. The only two reasons for you and I to put this on our Mac systems is if you like that, having a quick button you can click to open up a chat TV window. If you're someone who uses Spotlight all the time, which I never do, then that might be really useful for you. Or if you just like tabbing back and forth between two apps or having two things open side by side, two versions of ChatGPT, or you just like having something in a separate app. I certainly feel this way. Like I've always wished there was still a Netflix app because it's so annoying that that has to be browser based. I definitely like having the app. I use it about half the time, but it's not the primary way I use ChatGPT. I don't always remember to use it because I've just gotten so used to using it browser based. But I would love to know your thoughts. Are you going to install the app? Do you think it's a game changer? Do you wish they would release it for PC? Do you think they're going to start releasing different features or different functionality for the app versus the web browser? Is it useful for you to be able to take a screenshot or a picture right inside your computer inside of the ChatGPT app as opposed to taking a screenshot and then clicking upload. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, as always, if you found this video useful, interesting, or even just a little bit entertaining, please take a moment to hit the like button. That will help other people to see this video. If you hit the subscribe button, you'll see more videos from me in your feed. And if you hit that bell, you'll get notified every single time I post a new video. Thank you so much for lasting all the way to the end. I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching one of my videos. Hit the like button and then I've got a couple of sweet videos that I think you're gonna like. I've got one here and another one over here. You're gonna love them.